God is creating a separate lane for each one of you. The problem with so many people is they're trying to get in your lane. And for some of us, we're trying to get in their lane. We're all out of position trying to be in other people's lanes. And God is saying, I created a lane just for you. Don't worry about what somebody else has, because what I have for you is for you, just like what I had for them. The big assignments often require some uniqueness about a person, and it will take you completely away from everybody else. So let's just look at John the Baptist, because many of y'all know John the Baptist, right? John, John the Baptist was the forerunner. And, you know, oftentimes we, we go through this passage of scripture in Mark 1, and we, we, we see the characteristics of John the Baptist. We see what he was eating. We see what he was wearing. And it also gives a description of where his location is. And we never take the time to understand just how significant it is that John the Baptist happens to be in this specific location and what's going to happen as a result. Some of you, God has told you to go somewhere where no one else is, but you're not willing to go because no one else is there. Trust me, if God wanted everybody to be there, he would have had him there. But he has an assignment just for you. Do you know who you are? So let's just read, because John the Baptist is the forerunner. He's the messenger that's, that's uh, paving the way for who? Jesus. So I'm reading from the Holcomb Christian Standard Bible, and it's written as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness. First of all, a voice of one. That, that, that prophet didn't say it was going to be a voice of many. It was a voice of one who would be that unique person who would embrace the assignment that no one else is doing. Who would be the forerunner that's going to speak some things that you have not heard about? See, it takes a special kind of person to be able to take an assignment that no one has ever done or speak some things that no one has spoken about. And what you're seeing right now with John the Baptist is something amazing. He already is, is obedient. He's going to take this assignment. So here's what happens. He's in the wilderness, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness. First of all, he's in the wilderness. Some of us wouldn't even go to the wilderness. I'm not going to the wilderness. Nobody else is there. How are they going to find me in the wilderness? i got to be seen. God is going to do some things with you in the wilderness, but if you only trust yourself, you won't go to the wilderness. That's why people are stuck right now. They're not able to accomplish those goals, those visions, and those dreams in their lives because they're unwilling to go to a place where nobody is. In order for you to be a leader, in order for you to be the top of your game, you got to go to a place where nobody is going. You got to be okay with going at it alone. And if you, if you are not comfortable with that, guess what? You'll be paralyzed right here. Right here. So let's see what John the Baptist does. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. Y'all, that's a heavy assignment. The prophets have already talked about the Messiah coming. Someone's preparing a way for the Messiah. Don't you know it's a huge assignment? That's a huge assignment. The one that's going to prepare the way for the one. So I guess there's some folks who would say, well, if I'm going to be the one to prepare the way, I want to be seen preparing the way. And if I'm going to be seen, I ain't going to the wilderness. I want to go to the temple. I want to go to the top. I want people to know I'm the one God has called to prepare the way for the Messiah. That's how some of us are. God gives us a gift. God gives us an assignment. God gives us a talent. We want to be seen. We want to be over everybody. And God ain't going to use you because what he wants you to do is to go to that foreign place, that place of isolation. And first and foremost, the one thing you'll learn is that when God sends each one of us to a place of isolation, the wilderness, he wants to know, are you OK doing what he's told you to do with him in your presence and nobody around to be seen? 
See, that's when we get to a place of worshiping in spirit and in truth. When we're willing to do some things when there's no one else around. So let's see what John the Baptist is doing. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were flocking to him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. John the Baptist is in the middle of a wilderness. I thought I had to be at the temple. I thought I had to be at the top of something. I thought I had to be seen by everyone for them to know that God has called me. He's called you to do this special assignment. What we got to understand is that when God has told us to do something and he tells he tells us to go to a foreign place, a place where nobody else is. You don't worry about the people coming. God just wants to test your obedience. And when he can trust you, he'll send the people. Someone's got to hear this. Someone's got to hear this. There are some folks right now in their careers, whatever it might be, you know, I, I, even in ministry, because everything, everybody here is a minister. Even in ministry, I've, ha I've heard some folks say they called, and I wondered who called them. They said, I've been sent, and I wondered who sent them. But it's not for me to say anything. I said, well, let me just watch the tree and see what's going to happen. And then I talk to some folks and they'll say, well, yeah, God called me to to go and preach the gospel. But I'm waiting to get a church. <laughs> You're waiting to get a church. You don't even have an understanding of the scripture that the temple is you. You're the church. You're waiting to get to church, so therefore you won't preach the gospel until you have a building to preach in. <laughs> that lets me know that you're not one of the ones that's going to go to the wilderness and God told you to go to the wilderness prepared to wait for something else. You, 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 want the, you want center stage. You want, to be, you want to be up here. You want to be somewhere where everybody can see you so they can see you doing something. And if you don't see anybody seeing you, you're not going to do it. See, that's where we are as human beings. We're so, we're so caught up into who's seeing us do, we're unwilling to do when no one's watching. The authenticity of our walk is our ability to do things for God when no one else is watching. And not even worrying about someone watching, just doing it as he tells you to do it. The reason we can learn from John the Baptist is because I guarantee you on that journey to the wilderness, there was nobody following John. There was nobody following John. You probably wouldn't have followed John because John, most of why are you going into the wilderness, dude? Why are you going to the wilderness? If you have this important message... If you're preparing the way, certainly the Messiah is not going to come through the wilderness. That's human understanding. That's human understanding. And that's what many of us are in our lives is that we expect God to do something a certain kind of way on our terms. We want to control it. We want it to happen this way. This is how it's going to happen. And if I can't have it that way, hmm. I've seen people, you know, God is doing something in people's lives, but they want to control how something happens. Their whole lives have been about controlling something, controlling things. And when it doesn't happen the way they want it to happen, they're frustrated. They're confused. They're stressed out. It becomes a burden. I don't want this anymore. But what you got to do is you got to surrender to God and let God handle it. That's the problem with many of us is that we want to control every aspect of our journey. If I own something, it has to be sold by this time. If, I, if I'm single, i got to be married by this time. And guess what? He's got to look a certain way or she's got to look a certain way. He has to have a certain bank account. And I always found it really funny that a, that a woman can be working at McDonald's and a guy would be like, man, she's the one. But you let a guy be flipping burgers at McDonald's and you'll say, he ain't the one. 
you both missed that you're gainfully employed. But let's just get back to see what's going on here. He's in the wilderness, right? He has a great assignment, right? Let's see some other things about John the Baptist. So he's the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were flocking to him. That lets you know God is in control. He went somewhere isolated. The people found him. Then they baptized. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. Now, this is the interesting thing about John. John wore a camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist. And his food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Listen, y'all. If I came up in here with that on, y'all be like, he ain't no preacher. <laughs> and all you're eating is wild locusts and honey? Nah, I don't think God is using you because I have my own idea about the type of person God is going to use, and that ain't it. The moment you think you have God figured out is the moment God is going to just dumbfound you. He's going to confound you. You think you haven't figured out, I've been, I, I'm, I'm 50 years old, and I... I've been, I've been in church all my life. I've seen how church work. So what you're saying is, you know everything. You know how God is going to arrive. But you miss God arriving because you were so fixated on how things used to be. That's where we are in the church a lot of times, is that we're so fixated on how we think things should be, we're missing what God is doing that is unlike what we've experienced before. Human nature is to bring stuff from the past into our present. And that's what I've seen with church hoppers and people who uh, hop, go from church to church. They'll come here, go there, talk to my pastor. You say, we've got church hoppers, they come there, then they go somewhere else. And here's what they always say, especially with smaller churches like ours and church plants. They'll come up in here and say, well, uh, I don't like the way the music is going or I don't. I, they should be doing this and that. You know what? Why don't you plant yourself in somewhere, get under a covering and grow? Let me move back a little bit so I won't shower you with love. OK. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> Round over there, like shaking her head. You see my wife way down there, right? So you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> but we gotta understand something. We gotta see something with John the Baptist. Stu has a significant, a significant assignment. How many of you have significant assignments? See some assignments, and think about it. The wilderness in your life could re reflect you working in a secular field. <laughs> but the point is that when God does something, sometimes he'll take us all the way around a mountain as opposed to directly to the sea. He wants to test our obedience. He wants to take us to that place of isolation. Are we okay with doing what he's given us before him? And if we're okay with that, then we're ready to do it before a lot of people. And then when the people start to attack and try to fall away, it doesn't fade you because you started out doing it when nobody was watching. That's where we got to be. That's where we got to be. See, I know when God wants me to get back on focus because he'll wipe something from my mind. So anyway, let's get back into scripture. So he wore a camel hair garment with a leather belt. He ate that wild honey. He was preaching. Someone more powerful than I will come after me. And then this is the beauty of his obedience and humility. He says, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. Do you know the humility in saying something like that? Some of us, we get a great gift from God. We have the gift of prophecy. We have the gift of speaking in tongues. We have the gift of healing or we have the gift of teaching and we sort of begin to like the accolades that people throw on us to the point that we operate in a prideful manner. 
when they come and I visit a church, I got to have this and that. And I got to be escorted up to the front. I was at my home church this past Sunday and they escorted me to the front. I was like, oh, God, God, please forgive me. I like the seat in the back. That's just who I am. But I know they had an event going on. So I was cool with that. I was it was OK with that. It felt good. But trust me, I don't have to have a seat at the front. Uh, my identity is not shaped on where you seat me. My identity is where I'm already seated, which is in the kingdom with Jesus. We got to get to that place to understand that your position on earth does not matter. It's your position in he heaven that matters. And once we embrace that reality, we'll walk with a boldness and a confidence to say, you know what? I already have a high seat. So now I'm going to walk low. So right now you see John the Baptist walking low. He says, I am not worthy to even tie shoes. I can see some folks right now in the church saying, you know, I'm worthy to tie Jesus shoes. I've been tying my own shoes for a long time. I've been suffering for a long time. And so when Jesus shows up, yes, yes, I don't, I don't have to tie his shoes. Y'all tie it. Let me get my entourage. Y'all tie it. Jesus, what you need? OK, let me get some other folks to do it. See, that's when you know <laughs> it's not about God. It's not about Jesus. And it's about the person who have allowed their gift to make them out to be like a God. So let's keep going. Let's see what's happening. He says, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. Here's the deal. He's in the wilderness. He's wearing some crazy clothes. He's half clothed. He probably ain't, he hasn't taken a bath, scrubby beard. He's not eating the regular food that you're going to eat. He's going to eat uh, locusts and wild honey. All right. So right now, y'all probably be looking at him like he's a crazy man. See, let me tell you something about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven doesn't use those who are puffed up. He doesn't. The kingdom of heaven always comes in the earth through a mustard seed. I've shared that with y'all before. And a mustard seed is that seed that, that really is a, a least seed. It's not a seed you would select if you had a number of other seeds right next to it. But the word of God says that that seed, when it's planted and grows, it becomes the biggest tree that provides the support and structure to handle the birds. That's a metaphor for supporting you, helping you, giving you that place of refuge Providing you with food. When I think about everything God said, he says, I know what you need. I know you need clothes. I know you need food. I'm going to give you that. Just walk humbly. Walk lowly. Because you already have a high seat with me in the kingdom right now. You've been grafted in. You have a kingdom identity. So it don't matter what other people think about you. It don't matter what they say about you. They're going to talk about you because they talked about me. If you are following me, then guess what? You're going to be talked about. You're going to be persecuted. When you are persecuted by even those you thought had your back, you just smile. I got you. Yeah, I see you over there. God is so good that he'll even show you who's going to talk about you, who's going to not have your back before they even do something to hurt you. He gives you foreknowledge. God says, I got you covered. No weapons, no weapons, no weapons formed against you shall prosper. No weapons. How many of y'all believe that? No weapons. He never said that they wouldn't prosper, uh, form. He said they just wouldn't prosper. Some of us fall out when the weapons form. Oh, Jesus, I can't believe you. I, there's no God. God, you, you said in your word, you said that, that no weapon formed against me, you shall prosper. And all of these things are forming against me, and I can't take it. I don't know if you're real. I don't know what I've done. You beat yourself down. That's what the devil wants you. He wants you to beat yourself down. Listen, they're forming, but they're not prospering. Somebody needs to receive this. Somebody needs to hear this right now. See, you can't have a testimony unless you go through something. The going through something is the thing that's forming. The overcoming it is when it didn't prosper. You don't have a testimony if there's no weapons formed. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So, so John the Baptist 
He accepted his assignment. He's unique. He's not a counterfeit. Some of us get a call and we want to be a replica of our pastors. Or we want to be a replica of someone who mentored us. God said, I only want them to mentor you so that you can know that you can do what I've called you to do. But I didn't want you to be just like them. I already have this person doing themselves. I'm calling you out to be unique. I have people for you. There are so many people right now so mad at other folks because they're, they're successful, they've been elevated, they're mad. I can't believe, I can't believe that. Spending all this time mad at somebody else, you don't know what hell they went through to get what they got. And you're mad at their elevation and you ain't moving in the concentration that God has put you in. You're so focused on the elevation, you've missed your destination. God is saying right now, somebody's got to hear this. Somebody's got to hear this. You got to hear this. You got to know that that don't worry about what folks are doing around you. Don't worry if you don't have everything you need to do it. God says everything you need to take the next step is right before you. Will you take the next step? Brothers and sisters, I know it's scary. I know it's scary because we want to see what's all the way down the road. God, you didn't sent me to this wilderness like John the Baptist. I'm out here eating some crickets, locusts and honey. And all I got is some some straps on me and a belt. And you want me to go somewhere where nobody else is? God, you must be crazy. God is saying, I'm trying to keep you away from the crazy people. Somebody got to hear this. Somebody got to hear this. I got to keep you away from the crazy people so I can grow you to a point that you can come out of that situation so that when I elevate you and the crazy people come at you, you're not shaking. The wilderness is a place of growing up. The wilderness is a place of breaking strongholds. The wilderness is a place where you're going to have your coming out party. Let's see what's going on. So, Jesus comes and is baptized. That's John's confirmation of him doing what God told him to do. Many people ask, well, why did Jesus come? Well, the scripture said it had, this had to happen. But oftentimes we miss the point that when you're working for the Lord and you're doing something that everybody's looking at you crazy, because let me tell you something, if you go into other books in the Bible related to John the Baptist, it got so bad, so many people were coming, that folks from Jerusalem came to spy on him. He called them vipers. They came to spy on them. They actually left their high place in the world to come to a low place to see how in the world is this crazy man getting all of these people to come and do something they haven't seen before. So God took this man, put him in a, in a place that nobody was at, and sent a lot of people. And now the place that was considered the high place, folks are coming from there to check you out. You got to be okay with being unique. Don't try to be a counterfeit. Don't try to do uh, something somebody else is doing. You just do what God has called you to do. Whatever it is, whatever career field it is, whatever it might be, you just do it. Don't go ask somebody, uh, what do you think about it? Nah, if God said it, it's lined up with his word, you move in it. One step at a time. Don't try to figure out the next hundred steps because I'm going to tell you, sometimes you don't know what the next step is. John the Baptist took many steps to go into the wilderness. That's obedience. Just the journey from where he was to get to the wilderness tells you about his character. People don't ever talk about that. However many steps it took John the Baptist to leave his house to get to the wilderness, that was a test of obedience. He didn't know 
what was going to transpire. He just knew what God told him to do. And then it all unfolded. We have the benefit of scripture. We have the benefit of what I call DVR. We can go back now and look. But you best believe just walk into the wilderness. I hear you, God. I know you're telling me. I don't know what you're going to do. I know I'm supposed to baptize. I know I'm supposed to do this. Who are you going to send? Because I'm not walking in the direction where the people are. That's a test of obedience. And the journey itself let us know just how much God could trust John the Baptist. Now, let's just be clear. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Spirit in him. Amen. In the womb. Yeah. Not the wound, the womb. <laughs> but still, there was a journey to the wilderness. There was a journey. And on that journey, he might not have had what he liked to eat. It doesn't talk about the type of food John the Baptist liked to eat. But John the Baptist had something to eat. We missed that point, too. Sometimes you're going to have to eat something you don't want. Sometimes you're going to have to eat something you don't like. But God is providing. Don't get hung up on what it is. Just take it, do it, and be glad that he gave it to you. You might not like that job right now. That job ain't paying you what, it's, what you're worth. But guess what? The job is paying you. You might not like that supervisor. That supervisor's getting on your last nerve, but you got a job that's paying you. Somebody needs to hear this today. Somebody needs to hear this. You're unique. The more you stick to your uniqueness and not try to be a counterfeit, the more people are going to come at you. Don't you know that the folks in Jerusalem, not, not the folks who were coming to hear his message and be baptized, I'm talking about the religious zealots, the, 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 the chief priests and all of the folks they sent down, that they wanted to check this thing out. They weren't coming to be baptized. They were coming to say, okay, how can we discredit him? You're going to have some haters always trying to discredit you. You're going to have some people always coming at you. You're going to have some people always talking about you. But my God shall supply my every need. My God shall protect me from your vicious words. My God says remain blameless. And when I remain blameless, guess what? I'm victorious. John the Baptist, we can learn a lot about John the Baptist. So let's see. As soon as he came up out of the water, talking about Jesus, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending to him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. I take delight in you. Jesus was unique. It takes a unique person to prepare the way, way for something as unique as Jesus. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of us have tried to be like other people. Why do you think Hollywood is so embraced by so many people? Because they influence many folks. I want to look like somebody else. But everything you see going on in Hollywood reeks of hell. Nothing ever lasts. People get married, they get unmarried. They get divorced, they get married seven times. Nothing never lasts in Hollywood, but yet people try to be like them. And all of that is just a facade. It's not even real because when you peel back all of the makeup and all of the plastic surgery that's been done, all you have are broken vessels that's trying to be something because they don't know who God has called them to be. They can have all the money in the world, but all of a sudden you hear in the news someone committed suicide, some millionaire, some millionaire actor or somebody going through mental illness or whatever it might be. Yes, they're just like you. They go through mental depressions and all of this, but yet we want to be so much like them. God's saying, I didn't call you to be like them. I didn't call you to be a counterfeit. I called you to be unique. I want you to be the real thing. And when you embrace that, I'll send the people to you so
so you can do what Matthew 28 verse 19 says to disciple people, to teach them, preach the gospel, teach the gospel, tell them about Jesus Christ. Let them know about the good news. Let them know what God has done for you. Let them know about every struggle you've gone through and how God always came out for your good. Things worked out when it didn't feel good. You went through it. Weapons formed, but you're still standing. Somebody needs to hear this tonight, and I'm not going to stand up here long. I want you to remember the assignment was unique for John the Baptist. The location was out of the way. Sometimes we have to embrace an out-of-the-way location to do what God has called us to do. I don't want to drive all the way to Germantown. I live way down in walls. It's out of the way, but God has opened up the way. Why do I have to do go here, go there? Why do I have to move the assignment, the job they're calling me to go to Atlanta? But I like staying in Memphis. All my family's from Memphis. No one in Atlanta will know me. I want that job here. God says, no, I'm telling you to go. When I think about what he did with Abraham, he told Abraham to go. Abraham had everything he needed in the land he was. He had family. He had resources. God said, don't take none of that. Just go. He didn't even know where he was going to be a year down the road. He just heard the voice. He went and God led we got to get familiar with Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, to trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not on our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledging him. He will direct our path. It's not going to be easy at times. His way is easy. His burden is light. But the tug at our flesh to go in the opposite direction is what makes it hard to go in his direction. But the more we tune into the spirit and stay there with our focus, the easier it will be to shake it off. Someone says, shake it off. Shake it off. I want to see some movement. Shake it off. You got to 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 keep on moving. Do what God has called you to do. Be obedient. Are you, are you okay with taking that journey to the wilderness? Because that was a journey in itself. Yes, sister, that's a journey. And then having to be in the wilderness. But let me tell you something about Jesus. He wouldn't ask you to do something he's not willing to do. Because right after this moment, Jesus comes, he fulfills scripture, he's baptized. Guess where he goes next? To the wilderness. For 40 days and 40 nights. To be tempted by the devil. This is the last step before Jesus is thrusted into public ministry. And some of us have got to go through some struggles, some challenges. Before we can get thrusted into something public. Because if God allows us to go into something without preparation, we're going to fail. He wants to make sure you're prepared, you're conditioned to handle what he has for you. The word of God says, I have so many things for you. Words could not comprehend or even really describe what I have for you. So what you're going to have to do is trust me. So let me get you prepared because you think you know. You think you know where you're going. I know where I want to take you. You're not ready for it yet. You're not ready. You're not there yet, which means that I, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to hold it from you. I'm withholding it from you to protect you so that I can build you up so that I can release it to you. Because when I release what I have to you, to much is given, 
much is required. We never look at what's required and what's given. So let's look at what's required. John the Baptist died. His head was cut off. Are you ready for your head to be cut off after you're elevated by God? Can you handle that cup he gives to you right now if you have not been conditioned to handle it? You want to bypass the wilderness and go straight into the assignment? See, that's the problem with some folks right now. They want to bypass the wilderness experience and go straight into the assignment. You got some people, some pastors, I've seen this, take, took on pastoring, but never wanted to serve under another pastor. And when they served under a pastor, they were always chipping away at that pastor, backstabbing that pastor. Now, what do you think is going to happen if there's no repentance for that and they move and jump ahead and go and become a pastor? You reap what you sow. So I'm speaking from a pastoral time, but think about it in your own, wherever your own lane, whatever field you're in, whatever career, get backstabbed in the supervisor. Yes, a supervisor can be a little stubborn, but let me tell you something. Until you walk in the shoes of the supervisor to know what the supervisor is going through, sit down. There's some things you have no idea of the person who's over you, what they have to go through. They're taking a lot of hits and they're human. And sometimes that stuff spills over to you. But can you be humble? Can you be patient? Can you be kind in the midst of the pressure that's trickled down to you? Because if you can't handle the pressure of a supervisor who's here, and you can't handle the position of leadership. Everybody want to be a leader, but nobody want to go through the fire. Everybody want more money, but then when they get more money, they don't have any more money. Because they can't handle the money they got. And for some reason, they think if they just had more, that things would change. Nothing changes until your mind is changed about how you see money. The assignment. The assignment was unique. The location was out of the way. The messenger was unique. There's some folks who have hopped from church to church and have missed the blessings of God because the messenger didn't fit their mindset of what a messenger should look like or be. Word of God says to humble ourselves and walk lowly. There's a reason that we are to humble ourselves and walk lowly so that we won't miss the mustard seed where the kingdom of heaven is coming through. In order to see something least, we got to walk low. While there were many people who were baptized because of John the Baptist's obedience, there were many people who missed it because he didn't fit what Jerusalem said a prophet should look like. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear that. Brothers and sisters, final point. My scribbly scrap, I can't read it. When God is doing something through you, He'll build the audience. You don't worry about the audience. You don't worry about the audience. When you're doing it for him, he'll build the audience. He'll build it. Amen.